Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about a multi-catch block. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website, javacjava.com, select begin. I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the exceptions multi-catch block. There will often be occasions where you may need to catch more than one exception. You can have multiple catch statements with each one specifying a single exception class and then a code block for handling the exception. Now this could lead to a lot of redundant code. With a multi-catch statement, you can catch multiple exceptions in the same statement. Now a multi-catch statement looks like this. You've got your catch, right? And then in your... Um, inside of your parentheses here, you've got the exceptions that you'll be catching in the try statement. Of course, I left that, that off on, on that, but basically, like for example, your various different exception classes separated by a pipe. Now, if one of these is actually thrown inside of the prior, uh, the prior try statement there, it will go ahead and store that particular object type to this reference variable E, right? And then you can just do all of your, your code that you want to do, your statements or whatever, in just one particular code block instead of like three separate ones, right? Okay, so this one's going to be a fairly simple tutorial. Let's come down here, control C to uh, copy this stuff or right click and select copy. I'm going to move my browser off screen here. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really quick by right clicking and selecting new and shortcut. CMD, next, and finish. It's just that easy. Let's go ahead and open that up. First thing I'm gonna do is type in Java C, which is the Java compiler command. You should see all this stuff scroll by. Now, however, if you get an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. I'm gonna make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. Okay, CLS, clear the screen, CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory, and backslash tells it to go to the root. Um, I'm going to uh, make a directory called Java using the md command. Now, I already have a folder, but if you don't, I'll go ahead and create it for you. Change directories to the Java folder. I'm going to make a directory here called um, multi-catch. Change directories to that, and then I'm going to notepad multi-catch.java. Okay, let's go in the uh, control V to paste that stuff in there. Looks like I got a little bit of stuff to do there so formatting issue but not nothing major okay so i am declaring this static string file name right the variable up here class variable since it's static right and basically since i'm not initializing it it will implicitly initialize this to null for me and i'm going to be using that here to throw up some errors later on there so inside of the main method entry point, I'm gonna set file name equal to this string literal. So we're gonna make a hello.txt file off of our Java folder. And if you're wondering why there's two backslashes here, watch my tutorial on escape sequences. You'll definitely wanna understand why there's a, there's a very good purpose for this, but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial right now as it'll just take too much time. But I have a, a nice tutorial on escape sequences where I talk about um, you know, everything related to that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do inside of my try block here is I'm going to execute this statement um, file class f reference variable equals a basically a reference to a new file object and I'm going to pass it the file name that I want to create a handle to. Now, um, this particular constructor right here, if this path doesn't exist, right, or there's something wrong with this file or something like that, then it'll throw a null pointer exception. Okay, so, but there's nothing wrong with this path. We have the Java path, obviously, you know, we just created it, so we know we have it. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is invoke the create new file method right here. Now, that will do several things, like, for example, um, if, oh, you know what, null pointer exception, never mind. That only, that only throws null pointer up here if, if file name is equal to null, which is what I'm going to be doing with that later on. This here, sorry, this throws an IO exception if if this path doesn't exist there, right? And then security exception is one of these things that it's like, yeah, we'd have to do some security modifying for that folder or whatnot, but we won't necessarily get into that because you'll get the idea on the first two here. And if everything goes just fine, it'll display to the console created file 
C colon backslash Java backslash hello.txt, right? Um, otherwise, if we get an all pointer exception or an IO exception or a security exception, I'll display to the console unable to create hello.txt, right? And then plus the uh, basically the two string return type of the um, class there. So, or the reference variable that E is pointing to. The E is the reference variable pointing to an object. All right, let's go ahead and save this. Clear our screen. Compile it. Run it. All right, so we get created file, c colon backslash java backslash hello.txt. If I type in dir space dot dot, that'll do a directory of just everything up one folder, right? So you see there's our hello.txt. It's this is a zero byte file, but it did it did create it, so we're all good to go on that. All right, um, let's go ahead and do something else here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and comment out this line here and let's save this, right? So basically we know because I didn't initialize it, initialize it being like setting it equal to like a blank value, this is going to be null, right? So when we pass in a null value here, we're gonna get a null pointer exception thrown up here. So let's go ahead and clear our screen, recompile this, rerun it, and we get unable to create hello.txt java.lang null pointer exception. Okay, so you can see that's one of the exceptions that we are uh, catching right here. Now let's go ahead and put this back here. And I'm just gonna say, okay, we wanna create this under a Java temp folder, right? Well, that Java temp folder doesn't exist. And so create new file won't actually create a new folder to create the new file to there. Instead, it'll just throw an IO exception. So let's go ahead and save this and I'll show you how that'll work. And we'll run it again. Oh. Okay, unable to create hello.txt. Dot 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 Java IO dot IO exception. The system cannot find the path set specified, right? So we don't have this path right here, so it couldn't couldn't go ahead and create it. So through an IO exception. So that's basically the long and short of it. We don't need to you know go into security exception. You can just basically you know, put as many exceptions as you want here, and then you only have to have one single code block rather than, you know, doing it the, uh, the other way where, you know, you've got, like, catch and then null pointer exception E, or, and then another catch, IO exception E, and another catch, security exception E, and inside of there you've got three code blocks that all do essentially the same thing. So this is a nice way to just streamline your code and everything like that, so... I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, save this, put it back to the, the working portion of it there. Let's clear our screen, let's recompile, and there we go, created file, hello.txt, dot, dot, and there we go, got our file. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get rid of this, get rid of that, and, you know, uh, basically the only final thought here is just multi-catch can save basically a lot of duplicated, redundant code. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.